Whether it's bones, bugs, bullets, or blood, there are a variety of career choices in the forensic sciences. In my career, I've had the great opportunity of meeting a variety of specialists and professionals from toxicology to anthropology to uh, digital forensic experts. In today's video, we're gonna talk about some of those different experts and the different career paths in the forensic sciences. So whether you're a student or a true crime enthusiast, buckle up because we're gonna dive into the jobs and careers that help put science right in the forefront of crime solving. I'm Detective Zach Kowalski. I'm a crime scene investigator in real life and this is my counterpart, Bonesworth. And today we're gonna to talk about the variety of different career choices in the forensic sciences. So let's start off with what I do, crime scene investigators. So a CSI is a detective or a civilian investigator that responds to crime scenes to find and collect physical evidence. We're looking for physical evidence that can help determine either what happened, who did it, or where it happened, right? We're trying to answer the who, what, when, where, why, and how. So we're looking for fingerprints, we're looking for blood, we're looking for bullets, we're looking for any kind of physical evidence. And we're employing a multitude of tools um, and skills to do that. Now, what are the requirements to be a CSI? Well, it honestly depends on the agency and location. So across the nation and really globally, there are two different uh, types of crime scene investigators. You have sworn detectives. Those are uh, police officers who are detectives and they are assigned to a uh, crime scene investigations unit, kind of like what I do. Or you have civilian investigators who uh, they're not sworn police officers, but they do the same job. Um, they're just civilian investigators. So that's the two different kind of mindsets and it just depends on the specific agency um, for how they run their crime scene unit, right? Major uh, metropolitan areas, cities um, like Chicago or New York or Atlanta, they're all civilian investigators. But then as you get outside of those major metropolitan areas, you might have uh, sworn detectives that are uh, conducting the crime scene investigations. That is where it depends on if you're at an agency that requires you be sworn, then you have to have gone to the police academy. You have to have been a patrol officer and kind of worked your way over into an investigations uh, section. Whereas if you're at an agency that's a civilian crime scene investigator, you get hired straight into crime scene investigations. Um, and so that can be based off of um, your experience and any kind of a higher education that you may have. Now that leads into what kind of higher education is required? What kind of degrees are required? Uh, so most agencies for this kind of position want at, at a minimum a uh, bachelor's of science, right? And that can be a bachelor of science in forensic science or one of the hard sciences like chemistry or biology or physics. There are agencies that will take a bachelor of science in criminal justice, but I will tell you that criminal justice is really just a law enforcement degree. So stick with something like forensic science or chemistry or uh, something outside of that um, CJ degree. What's the pay range? Uh, it depends. It depends on the agency and the location once again, but it can start anywhere from the high 30,000s um, all the way more than $85,000 a year. Um, that's obviously based off of years of experience and your education and your location. So between 35,000 and up. So what kind of personal skills are required for a job like CSI? Well, you have to have an eye to detail. Uh, that is incredibly important because you are searching a scene for the smallest of evidence, whether that's hair or contact DNA. That attention to detail is really important. You need to be methodical um, and be able to take your time and do it right the first time. Um, attention to detail is really important in your writing, how you communicate. Do you write um, good communicative reports um, that you can take a very technical topic and make it very simple for the layperson that is going to be like a jury member? Um, and then you need to have a strong stomach. You're gonna deal with some really gross stuff. I've gone into dumpsters and been looking for evidence in dumpsters. I've gone into sewers. And then of course we deal with decomposing bodies sometimes. So a strong stomach is really important. So that's kind of a basic info on CSI. I still think that after 
uh, the long career that I've had so far in it, uh, it's still the best job in the world um, because you're going out into the field to solve mysteries, and that's super cool. Next, let's talk about forensic pathologists or the medical doctors or medical examiners that are going to conduct the autopsies or post-mortem examinations of dead people. Their whole job is to determine how and why somebody died. Forensic pathologists are medical doctors who unravel the story of a person's death through autopsies. Pathologists stand at the crossroads of medicine and law conducting autopsies to reveal secrets held by the deceased. Their scalpel is a key that unlocks the final moments of a person's life, discerning natural causes from foul play. They're kind of like medical detectives who often provide critical testimony in court, translating their medical findings um, for jury members. They're among the higher earners in forensics, with seasoned pathologists earning well into six figures. After medical school, they embark on a rigorous journey of residency, fellowships, and then specializing in pathology and then forensic pathology. Forensic pathology is super cool to me and it is a, a career that I really admire because you're taking medicine and you are applying medicine to understand how somebody died, especially when it's uh, outside the norm. That's where it gets, I think, really cool. Perhaps firearms and bullets are more your speed and you have a technical interest on investigating how these can be tied to crime scenes. That's where a firearms examiner comes into play. These experts spend their days analyzing firearms, bullets, and residues to link them to crimes. The forensic firearms examiner dissects the story told by guns and bullets, scrutinizing weapons, cartridge cases, and bullet fragments to match them with crime scenes and suspects. Their expertise extends to understanding the mechanics of firearms, the composition of ammunition, and the subtle markings left behind with every shot, because every firearm creates a unique marking on the bullet that it fires. These examiners often provide the definitive word on whether a particular weapon was involved in a crime, and their work can turn the tide in trials. They are relied upon for their precision and their accuracy, and their earnings reflect their specialized skill set, being between $45,000 and $85,000 a year. Education requirements typically see a Bachelor of Science in Forensic Science or some related degree, and an apprenticeship in firearms examination upon getting hired by a laboratory. Or perhaps you're more interested in being able to figure out who somebody is from the smallest piece of evidence. That's where DNA analysts come into play, being able to find somebody's genetic profile from the absolute smallest trace amount of DNA evidence. You see, DNA analysts are the code breakers who compare genetic material from crime scenes to suspects and victims. Forensic DNA analysts are the modern day hereditary sleuths examining genetic clues left at the crime scene. They amplify and sequence DNA from the tiniest samples to match suspects, victims, or to identify unknown individuals. The nature of this work requires a strong background in genetics and biology, as well as a keen understanding of the legal standards for evidence. Analysts must be detail-oriented and have the patience for extensive laboratory work. It is truly the cornerstone of forensic science and seen as the gold standard of evidence. Salaries are competitive from $40,000 to $80,000 a year. Higher education requirements start off with a bachelor's degree in a life science and some type of apprenticeship upon being hired. Or perhaps you love chemistry and a career in forensic toxicology is more your speed. Forensic toxicologists detect poisons and drugs inside the human body. Forensic toxicologists are the guardians against invisible threats, tracing the presence of toxins and drugs in the body. They work on cases of overdose, poisoning, and substance abuse, often collaborating with law enforcement and medical professionals. Their analysis provides a chemical narrative of exposure and effect, which can be crucial in establishing criminal intent or cause of death. Salary ranges start from $40,000 and work their way up over $100,000 based off of experience. Education requirements start off with a bachelor's degree in chemistry or biochemistry or some kind of related forensic field. 
You ever wonder who analyzes the needle in the haystack? Well, in the forensic community, that's the trace examiner. These are the analysts who examine hairs and fibers and trace materials of the absolute smallest physical degree. The forensic trace examiner is the one who really does find the needle in the haystack, be it a fiber from a suspect's clothes or a shard of glass from the crime scene. They use microscopes and other analytical instruments to identify and compare trace materials. This career is for those who appreciate the subtleties that can be the linchpin in criminal investigations. They are often behind the scenes heroes whose patience and attention to detail can really uncover the links that would otherwise go unnoticed. Their pay range starts at $35,000 and goes all the way up beyond $75,000 based off of experience. And they require a bachelor's degree in forensic science, chemistry, or biology, or a related field. If you just Google forensic trace evidence, you will see a multitude of casework where the hair or the fiber has been the solving factor. And that's why I think that trace examiners are some absolutely incredible analysts. If you like puzzles, then there's a good chance you'll probably like fingerprint analysis and latent print examinations, where we're looking at unknown fingerprints and identifying them to the sources that they came from. They apply various techniques to develop prints from surfaces and compare them to known prints, helping to confirm or exclude identities. Their work requires a blend of field skills for evidence collection and lab skills for print analysis. They must be meticulous as their accuracy for finding things can directly impact the outcome in an investigation. Earnings are commiserate with the skill level and the complexity of their work, with annual earnings starting at $35,000 and going well over $90,000. Typically, a bachelor's degree in forensic science or a related field is necessary, plus advanced specialized training that you obtain on the job. I can tell you as a latent print examiner that there is not a cooler feeling than when you are able to figure out who left behind a fingerprint at a crime scene. It's incredible what bones can tell you, especially when examined by a forensic anthropologist. A forensic anthropologist is somebody who is able to study and examine human bones to determine a variety of characteristics and traits about that particular individual. Anthropologists piece together human remains to tell us the story of the deceased. Forensic anthropologists are the bone specialists, interpreting skeletal remains to understand a person's life and death. Their analysis can reveal identity, cause of death, and even historical context to uncovered remains. Their work is both academic and applied in setting. This career demands patience, a meticulous approach to excavation and analysis, and the ability to convey findings clearly. Salaries reflect the specialized nature of the work and the level of education required. A master's degree or a doctoral degree in anthropology with a focus in forensic methods is typically necessary, with earnings starting off at $40,000 and going to well over $100,000. Thank you so much for joining Bonesworth and I today. Hopefully you found some of these careers interesting. Forensic science is an incredible field of disciplines to be in. I love every day I go to work and hopefully you can find a similar passion. If you liked today's content, then hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help us. I'm Detective Zach, that's Bonesworth, and until next time, stay curious.